listening to Good Morning Gwinnett, a division of Noise Media Network, hosted by Audrey Bell Kearney, sharing stories about people and places around beautiful Gwinnett County and beyond. Monday through Thursday at 10 a.m. Southern Living at its best. Good morning, good morning, good morning, all my Gwinnishas out there in Gwinnett Land and all of you around the world listening to the sound of my voice. It's a beautiful day here in Gwinnett County. I'm hoping that you guys can hear me. I got some new stuff going on right now and um, hopefully everything is running smoothly. I can hear myself over here. I hope you guys can hear me. Georgette, can you hear me? I can hear you. All right, cool. I just want to make sure because I, my music was playing kind of low. I'm like, okay, what's wrong with my music? Why is it playing so low? So, but it, hopefully it sounds it sounds pretty good. Hey, y'all! Happy Memorial Day! Listen, I'm I'm, I'm all y'all know me. I'm always doing something new. I'm always trying to make this show better. So I'm I got all this technology again. I gotta show it to y'all. But anyway, it's a beautiful day here in Gwinnett County. It's 66 degrees, going up to high about 79. And so I'm excited to be here. Like um, y'all can't see it right now, but I got my studio. I got the studio set up. I'm live. I'm hoping everybody can hear me live. That's a good thing. Georgia just here with me today. She's back, <laughs> and she's on video with me. I'm so I'm so happy about. I know her. that is so crazy, <laughs> and it's so crazy because she's been gone. She's been in New York. Now let me ask you this: because you haven't been to New York in a minute, um, okay. and I know you spent some time there with your mom this past um, this past like last month. How was that it, that whole going back to New York? Because you know New York was one of the, the places hit the worst when it came to the pandemic. So how was it being home? And Georgia, that's her home, you by know, the way. Yeah, that that is my home, and uh, it was ooh, it was scary at the first time because I have not really been even on a plane. You know, I know you have you've yeah. been on a plane a couple of times since the yeah. pandemic. It's almost been towards the well, not the end of it, but you know, hopefully the end. But um, it was it was noisy. That's all I can say. <laughs> I can't, you know, sometimes I think I think back to myself. I can't believe I actually was in that space all the time. And when you come out of it and then you go back into it, it is just interesting for me. I was I was overloaded. I I, I was really overloaded with a lot of traffic. <laughs> but I mean, I still miss it. The best food ever. I mean, you know, I don't. I mean, I just ordered. I had. I mean, I must have ordered out almost every day. That's so. That's how excited I was to just eat food from New York. You know, it was just that we had the best fish tacos and mm. the best Chinese food. Oh my god! Oh god! Don't oh mention Chinese food. Oh, oh. When I go to Jersey, I, I get Chinese food. I get White Castle. Pizza. Yeah, I go to White Castle. Yeah. White Castle. I go to this place called this place called Sandwiches, where we used to go. Like they had one in East Orange, one in Orange, and. They make the best Italian cheeseburgers. They make the best pastrami sandwiches. And they make the best chef salad. And I don't care when I go to Jersey, I have to hit at least, out of, out of the three of those, I hit at least two of them every time. Yeah. yeah White Castle, too. as soon as I get off the plane. I have to have Chinese food in New York. It's just like the shrimp fried rice, you would think, oh, it's shrimp fried rice. I'm telling you, it is the best ever. I mean, I, I, can, I, was, I was in love, okay? So, uh, but it, you know, it always brings me back home, you know. I mean, yeah. I'm from there, so it doesn't make a difference. Uh, even though it's noisy when I get home, it's still home, and all my family is still there. So uh, that that makes me that makes me always miss it and, and happy to be there. But uh, but it is noisy, I tell you. I, I've been in the south way too long. I think <laughs> it's, just, it's so crazy because when we so went, quiet, to, yeah. you know, I was in Boston last weekend. Not this weekend, just past, but the weekend before that. And it's so funny because we hardly ever hear sirens, right? Right? You hear something like, a siren? You know, it's the craziest thing. So we were up there, well, it's like sirens like every day. It was crazy, man. But it's so uh, it's so my, true. And my, uh, and my mom, she lives, you know, in midtown Manhattan. So it's not like she lives, you know, in the Bronx or the outskirts or anything. she lives in the city and she lives um on a uh a street that goes from Central Park West to Central, you know, to, to from the east side to the west side. So the buses stop in front of her place. I mean, the hospital is there a hospital on one side, a hospital on the other. So there's always sirens back and forth. Ugh. And she lives right next to a train station. Oh, it is God. Just busy. That it sounds busy like a lot of noise. noise. The, first time, the first time I went on a bus there, I was just like, <laughs> okay, so let me, you know, this is it's, uh, <laughs> my mom. Unfortunately, she's, you know, her health is kind of waning a little bit, but I had to take her back to the hospital when I was there. And so we get to the hospital 
I hadn't been around a lot of people. And so, you know, based on what she had, it wasn't an emergency emergency. So they put it in a waiting area, you know, to, mm -hmm. to transfer upstairs. And they put it, so I go into the hospital. I'm already paranoid, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, so many people. But I will tell you, I will, t I will say this, though. That almost everybody that was in there, I mean, I, literally everybody was in there had a mask on. And every place I traveled, even when it was on the bus, because uh, I was I was scared to go on the bus, but it was, but everybody had a mask on. I mean, literally. I, so I was happy to, to see that. But I will tell you, I literally had an anxiety attack. I think the first night when I brought, when I came home from the hospital before they transferred her upstairs to a room, because mm -hmm. there were so many people in emergency. Mm -hmm. It was just into the room and it was just beds lined up against the wall like little curtains in between and i'm thinking uh yeah i'm not i'm not staying here <laughs> we're yeah. not staying here. Wow. Just so paranoid i mean it was it was just too many people all at once you know yeah. and i'm just so not used to that anymore and then with this covid thing so but um but I, yeah we survived we're good <laughs> well i'm glad you're back because i've probably been messing up the word of the week probably like no 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 i, I was like you okay did, you did amazing well thank you, you. did amazing i, I tried I'm like, that's that's exactly what i would have said no oh, so there you go i will thank you i tried hey, listen y'all i tried she was sending me the word like lord she's not gonna be on again i gotta do the word you know i'm so used to doing my little inspiration at the end and then i you know I'm, I and that's like, great hey you know hey look we all do it look that, that's how you do it this is how i do it Everybody does it their way. It's all good. It's all good. good. It's all really good. good. All right. Well, thank you. So glad you're back. So listen, y'all, it's National Memorial Day. We all know that, but it's also National Smile Day. So smile. Yay. National Smile Day and National Macaroon Day. Now, for those, I don't like macaroons. Well, love those. Do you? I don't <laughs> like macaroons. Mm-mm. Okay, mm -hmm. so listen. Listen to this. It's National Speaking Sentences Day. Let me try to. I'm gonna try to work that one out. I'm gonna try to work that one out. I'm gonna try to speak in complete sentences today. You know, I'm trying to. I'm, I am going to speak in complete sentences today. I'm just saying, y'all. Period. Yeah, period. That's what my baby said. My baby be like, period. That's her thing. She's like, period. I'd be like, yeah, girl, period. <clears throat> I just did something. I don't know what I did. I'm always doing something. All right, so anyway, let's go ahead and get on with your horoscopes brought to you by Noted Astrologer Micah Thyssen for today, May the 31st, um, Monday. Let me tell you this real quick, though. So so I told you all my daughter is really into, like, the whole spiritual and enlightenment and all that stuff. So she was like, listen, we're about to go into a Mercury, Mercury retrograde, right? As if I knew what that was. I did not know. Now I know. But when she said this, I was like, oh, okay. What does that mean? So she says you have to um, – it's really about – refocusing and not starting anything new so from saturday last past saturday <laughs> to june the 22nd i think don't start anything new and mercury is the planet that um rules our communication and technology so you know me i got tech all around me y'all can't see it but it's it's tech start from this side of my room all the way around from that side of the room it's tech everywhere and so because i like technology and so I was like, Lord have mercy, my whole life is wrapped around technology. So I had to keep up great energy to make sure my technology smooth well, goes well. But she was like, um, make sure that you don't start anything new. Make sure that, you know, when, you, when, when you're communicating with people that you hear what they're saying and get your point across so they can understand what you're saying. Because that's what's going. That's where the problem is going to come in at. So if you're having problems in the communication sector, your technology is going haywire, it's the retro, it's the Mercury retrograde. So if you if you know about that, you can kind of say, okay, is this the retrograde? Because I swear, the retrograde started on twenty eighth. I told her, I said, listen, I think the retrograde done started. No lie, Saturday morning we get up and all the lights just blink out, and I'm like, the internet goes down. Just I walk out my bedroom and said, so I said to my uncle, did you see that? And he's like, yeah, everything just shut down. It was crazy. I said, oh my god, it just started already. Wow. It's, it's more. It started. <laughs> So, but, but I could say that the funny thing, and I said to her, I said, you know, I said, I know it's supposed to be like, you know, you have the communication issues and, you know, and, but it's also like, um, time for you to cleanse. So don't start anything mm -hmm. new. Don't get any surgeries. It said, if you can't, if you can help it, don't get any surgeries. Don't start anything new. Just kind of clean up. It's pretty much saying clean your house up. Right. And be mm -hmm. cognizant of the things you hear and say and make sure your technology is good. If you drive and be careful while you drive. It was like that kind of stuff. So I was like, okay. Mm -hmm. So, you know, me, DJ, I always got a new idea. Right. 
So I said, to <laughs> don't start anything new. Listen, I, listen, like my husband said, I said to him, I said, yeah, that's a great idea, but I can't start it after June 21st. It's hilarious. But it goes, it goes on with the podcasting thing, but it's brand new. <laughs> and I was like, I can't start it after June 22nd. So he's like, oh. oh so I told God. him why. So he's like, okay. So she, so my daughter has all of us like all wrapped up in enlightenment and spirituality and all that good stuff. So I just want to share that with y'all. So y'all know it's a Mercury retrograde. So if, you, if your technology start going haywire and people start talking crazy to you, you don't understand what they're talking about. Mercury <laughs> rules all technology and communication. So that is what's happening. And unfortunately, we're going to be in this retrograde to June the 22nd. So there you have it. Yeah, so that's good to let us know that it's not us. You know, that's yeah. not us going crazy. Yes, exactly. You know? It's so funny because, um, and I'm going to do the horoscopes in a second, y'all. I know, I know. But it's so funny because um, when you look at history, I'm talking about old history, not real old history. Everything was ruled by the stars and the moons mm-hmm. and the planets. Yep. And, you know, I said to myself, the water, the water, the water, all, that all that stuff, right? And I said to myself, and they, but you, if you talk to religious people, they'll tell you it's, it's hocus pocus, it's, it's evil, it's all this stuff. And I'm like, well, how is that so? Because when you think about this, and, and I know people will debate me to the end. Jesus didn't have a Bible. He didn't have a Bible. So they can say what they want to say there was no Bible. Jesus didn't have one. The man wrote the Bible after Jesus was gone, right? And then they left out some yep. of the books. And they we'll debate this forever, but there's history showing that. I'm not debating anybody. You believe what you want to believe. But I just find it so weird that people don't believe when you come when it comes to like um the zodiacs and things like that. Like I remember mm-hmm. being in church one time and the pastor, his, his, his zodiac sign was a cancer. He's like, cancer, why would you say that? Why would you want to name or something? I'm like, I'm going to say, sir, the planets were here before we were. They were ruling us. We're we're sitting on a planet right now. We're here's the crazy. We're sitting on a planet. We're just a piece on a planet. Like the planets were here before we were. And so, but we're we're staying on the planet. We're not floating around on the planet either. So there's some kind of what is that about? You know what I mean? Like we're we're here. We're not like shooting out everywhere because this planet is spinning. It's not just sitting. That's right. It's not just in one space. That's you know, right. It's constantly rotating. It's so constantly rotating. What is that about? Right. But, that, <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. So why don't people believe like in the stars and the moons and the waters? And, oh, to me, I believe that stuff. Right. I believe mm-hmm. in God. I believe in God too. I believe that God yeah. is up there. He created us all some way. He's up in the, on another planet looking down. Mm-hmm. Right, he's on the big planet. We're on the little planet. We're on the little planet. He's up there on the big planet looking down. And whenever they decide they want to visit us, he sent them down to visit us. The angels, I'm talking about. I know, I know y'all talking about the angels, they're all around us. <laughs> Whew. Anyway, girl, let me get on with this horoscope here. Listen, we're gonna kick it off like we always do, and that is with Aries. Make those phone calls and pay your bills. Mm-hmm. Have a heart to heart talk with family and find out what the problems are. You are best to stick to yourself today. Listen, have that heart-to-heart talk, Aries. I just told you we're in a Mercury retrograde right now. People can't read your mind. You got to say what you need to say. Get it out because communication is one of the big issues with the Mercury retrograde. So have a heart-to-heart talk and, and make them phone calls and pay your bills. Get your stuff together. This is the time for us to get things in order. You know, that's what I'm looking at. Taurus, you can make money if you concentrate on producing services or goods that will make domestic chores easier. Children may not be on your mind. <laughs> they like, nah, not today. <laughs> Don't hesitate to make special plans just for two. Communication, communication will be the source. Listen, I listen. My computer just just fluctuated. Communication <laughs> will be the source of your knowledge, and you must be sure to spend time with the ones who have more experience communication and spend some time with those who got more experience than you that's where you learn stuff gemini yeah. you mustn't be so trusting residential moves will be considered care must be should be considered carefully you can bet that someone in a higher position is watching to see how busy you are so you fun right now like you playing busy they're watching you gemini so stop playing busy because <laughs> your, your boss is watching you and they're trying to see just how busy you really are cancer <laughs> deception Regarding joint finances or investments will cause upset between family members. Take positive action. Now's the time to concentrate on building a strong financial future for your family. Cancer. Now is the time. And listen, let me tell you something. <clears throat> you got some you got some deception going on with some joint finances and some investments. It's gonna cause upset in the family, but it's gonna work itself out. Take positive action. 
And now's the time to concentrate on building a strong financial future. If you haven't before, now's the time. Leo, use your better judgment before you sign up for a costly venture. Don't gossip. I, I, the Leos I know don't gossip very much. You want to complain about the injustice that is going on. Yes, I know it's a lot of injustice going on. But here's the thing, Leo. Don't complain. Figure out a solution. Help help be a solution to the problem. Complaining doesn't get us anywhere. It gets your blood pressure up. You make you sick. Get you, <laughs> make you stressed out. It, it doesn't help. Figure out a solution for that thing. Once you figure that solution out, then, then, then you got, now you're making moves. Virgo, uncertainties regarding your love life will surface if you have neglected your mate. Do not ruffle feathers if possible. You will want to take off and have some recreation. Listen, I know what you mean. You want to go out right now. You want to have some fun. I get it, Virgo. I get it. Don't ruffle the feathers, though. If possible, just don't ruffle the feathers. All right, we're going to go to a song. We'll be right back after the song to give you more of the horoscopes brought to you by noted astrologer Michael Thyssen. So stay tuned. Welcome back, welcome back. It's your girl, Audrey Bell Kearney, along with my good friend, Joe J. Taylor, bringing you the Daily Horoscopes, brought to you by Noted Astrology, Mike Thyssen. Listen, y'all, my screen is just, every time I do something, it jumps, so I'm freaking out, like, yeah, but anyway, ooh, okay, I don't know what that is, I'm not going to touch it. Um, anyway, we're going to pick it up like we always do, and that is with Libra, 
Libra, financial affairs do not look too favorable today. I know you don't want to hear that, Libra. Nobody wants to hear that one. Financial affairs are not too favorable today. All right? But opportunities may come up at a prestigious affair. You can enjoy doing things that include your children. Your financial affairs don't look that great, but you might have some great opportunities, but you got to go out to some prestigious affairs. It's the latest, listen, it's Memorial Day. Who knows who's going to be at the cookout today, especially if it's one with like your, you know, like prestigious people. You never know. Scorpio, you can surprise members of your families, which will in turn bring you a pat on the back. You will learn to a great deal from people with different cultural back da- backgrounds. Emotional deception is evident. Ooh, somebody's going to be deceptive today with you. Listen, just watch your back, Scorpio. That emotion, they're playing on your emotions today. Don't let them. Watch your back. All right? Sagittarius, your ability to relate with close, with, will close the gap, the generation gap. This is not the time to lend or borrow money or possessions. Tie up your personal papers and push to have legal settlements completed. My my screen is just jumping. Now, let me tell y'all something. Before, uh-huh. Yeah, it's okay. Let me tell y'all this before I get to Capricorn, right? So, all day Saturday, I was down here messing with the computer because I got, like, this screen right here. I got, like, the com- Anyway, I got this whole setup that I done put together so I can function better. So, I can look at the camera and not be like this way. Looking at the camera, it's going that way. So, I did all these different things. Nothing flickered. Nothing flashed. Nothing did anything. I checked my lighting. Everything. Right? And now, every few seconds, the screen flutters. So, I'm like, oh, Lord, no. But anyway, we're not going to embrace that because I know what's going on. It's going to be smooth sailing. All right? Sagittarius. I got that one already. I'm ready. To, I'm about to be Sagittarius again. <laughs> Capricorn. Financial limitations are likely if you take risks. Peers may not be on your side. Confronting a situation will only result in indignation and misunderstandings. Communication. Yes. If you're going to confront the situation, be careful because it could lead to indignation and misunderstandings. Especially right now. When a retrograde, a Mercury retrograde. Aquarius. You can get a promotion if you put in a little extra details. Unstoppable relationships, unstable relationships are likely. Channel your efforts into achieving your goals. Listen, listen, Aquarius. Put that effort into achieving your goals, whatever they are business, financial, emotional, health, wellness, whatever they are. Put the energy there. Don't mess around with it, all the rest of that stuff. Just put your energy where it needs to go. Last but not least, my fellow fish Pisces, you need to make your environment a better place. Working on it. With more comforts and better entertainment centers. Mm, probably so. Friends and relatives may not understand your needs. Mm, you'll find travel or involvement in large groups gratifying. Yes, yes, yes. We'll be traveling soon. Won't we, Georgia? We're going to Miami, yeah. y'all. Yes, we are. Miami. Here we, now, listen, this is a funny thing, y'all. I not, I don't like the heat. Well, let me, let me close the show. So, that's all the horoscopes I got for that fish. Listen. Make your make your environment better. I look like I got a lot of stuff behind me. That's because I do. But I like space. And so this room, you see the stuff behind me. But part of the room is empty, pretty much. I got like one little thing there, one little chair there. Like this a whole wall just kind of empty. Then I got a whole other room over there that's huge. That's pretty empty. So you see all my stuff right here. This is where I live in this little space right here. So it looks like it's a lot of stuff. But I don't like a lot of stuff, honestly. I do not. So I don't know about you, but I'm, but this fish right here is always trying to make her environment better and more welcoming and warm and all that good stuff. Like I got to go get me some air freshness because I love stuff that smells good. And I'm having. I, I realize I ran out, and I normally have them all over downstairs. Like I'm downstairs in my house, so I normally have them all over. But anyway, so the horoscopes I got for today. I'll be back again tomorrow to bring you more of the horoscopes brought to you by Noda the Shard and Michael Thyssen. Now let's get on to some news you can use. All right. Listen, I'm so happy to be here with Georgette today. Y'all don't even understand. Like, I get on here every day and I run my mouth by myself. But it's nice to have a co-host. And I'm excited because, you know, I get a chance to have somebody to talk to and bounce things off of. And, you know, I'm always looking to make this show better and better and better. And so... Um, that's why we got video now. We didn't have video before and I'm still, I'm I'm perfecting the video and then I have to make sure that people know to watch the video. I'm launching a new podcast. Well, I launched it already. And what happened was it was supposed to be, um, uh, Wise Women Invest Wednesdays and Callum was going to come on every Wednesday well one Wednesday out of the month but now we're going to make that an every Wednesday situation and it's going to come on around 6 o'clock in the evening so um, 
But we're trying to determine whether or not it's going to go live. But it's going to go, it's going to be on tonight, I mean, Wednesday at 6 o'clock. So be sure to check in. We're going to start off with the basics of investing. I, I love podcasting. Someone interviewed me last week, and it was funny because I think I, that was almost a two hour interview. Wow. I've never done an interview that long. Like, I've never been interviewed that long. And I and I was looking at the clock, and I was like, wow, this is going to be a really long. Because you know it's only like 30 minutes, an hour. I, people have interviewed me for like 15 minutes. That was almost a two-hour interview. And she was like, man, we could keep going. Because she just had a lot of questions. And, you know, I've been doing this thing a long time. So I've had a lot of experiences, right? Good, bad, ugly, and different, all that. I've had them, you know, stressful. And so, you know, she was asking me some really great questions. And I got a chance to really share stories because... <laughs> Yeah, I know I tell a lot of stories. Um, <laughs> I had a lot of stories because I've been an entrepreneur for so long. But I got to tell y'all, when, when she asked me, she said, I, I see you are really passionate about podcasting. I said, I am. Because she, she had asked me about Wise Women Invest. And I said, well, you know, what happened was I've had a license twice. Like, this is my second time having my insurance license. And I said, I had it back in 99 when I first got it. But I said, that's when Georgia and I started the doll company. And we kind of pushed that to the side because this was more exciting. Mm -hmm. I said, and I picked my license back up in 2018 and got recertified. I said, but I, you know, I, I, I write policies for family members and friends. But what, what, what happened was I realized that there's so much going on in the, in, in the insurance industry. People are getting... People are making their families rich because of insurance, right? And before, when you think about insurance, you just think of it as, as a way to bury a family member because that's what that's what we've mostly been taught. People are using insurance to leverage millions of dollars. It's the crazy. I was like, what? Like, there are so many things you can do with insurance outside of just put somebody in the ground. I'm talking about for real, y'all. And we have... Um, our company have this this uh, policy that has a life benefit, like a living benefit attached to it, which I think that's the most. Uh, that I think that's such an amazing benefit. It is just, and so let me tell you what a life benefit is, a living benefit is. So if you have an insurance policy, and let's say for instance, God forbid, you get like a terminal illness, like a cancer or something like that, that policy allows you to take money out of the policy, and and use it for your medical expenses, and so. Um, if you listen to the episode with Carolyn Shoemaker, she talked about when this woman had cancer. They gave her like a couple of months to live. She took the money out of the policy, like 70 or 80% or something. And she went to Paris and lived for another three years. So she probably needed to go to Paris a long time ago. But I said all that to say it's so much you can do with insurance. And so me and Carolyn and Georgia and a bunch of us, we are licensed professionals in the financial industry. We just don't talk about it. But I realized that this platform, Georgette, will allow us to mm -hmm. really help people and educate people about starting investments and, you know, bringing on amazing people. Yeah. I've been on some calls with some amazing folks, y'all. I'm talking about people buying land. I'm talking about people buying houses. They got trailer parks. They're building tiny house communities. I've been on some amazing calls. And, yeah. and and it's so crazy because right now we could pretty much do anything. I, I interviewed a woman. Um, God, what was her name? The woman with the, the building um, container houses, Georgette. Oh, uh, um, Wyona, Wynona, Wynona, Wynona Satcher. So Wynona, sorry, Wynona, I forgot, girl. I got a lot going yeah. on. Wynona Satcher builds container homes. Do you understand what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. for those people who are looking to get into real estate, do you realize you can spend forty five thousand dollars and get a container home yeah. and make your money back? All you need is somewhere to put the container home. Put it on. A, listen, put it on a. Put it on a a, a, a truck. Cause you could put it on a truck, sit in this and on a lot, and rent it out. Like this is the this is the most lucrative time I've ever seen in history where you can make money pretty much doing anything. I'm talking about y'all. I'm talking about sitting at home. So it's really like is it is. Let me just say this: it's overwhelming. There are so many opportunities right now. I sit up yes. at night and I watch YouTube G, and there's this girl on there. Her name is Cat Theo. Yeah, and you got to watch her. Cat Theo go out and find every kind of way possible to make money. Wow. Go to YouTube. Her name is Cat Theo. K-A-T-C-O. T-H-E-O. Cat Theo will go out and find you a way to make some money. Do you hear me? That woman has found so many legitimate ways to make money. I'm talking about legitimate ways. I'm not talking about just like some nonsense. I'm talking about places where you go, put your information in, and get and start doing business, start a job online, work from home. Cat Theo, listen, Cat Theo is no joke. She is out there finding stuff for you to do. I was on a, um, I was on my morning, oh crap, I missed it this morning. Oh, I missed it. I forgot it was Monday. 
I was on my um I was on my uh, Monday morning mastermind, right? It's about three hundred people every morning at eight o'clock on that call. And um they were talking about Turo. Now my nephew told me about Turo about two years ago, but he was telling me he was gonna get a car, he was gonna run a car through Turo. So it's like a car rental place, right? So instead of you going to like Hertz or Budget or Thrifty or Avis or wherever you go, you can just go to Turo and pick the car you want and rent it for the day. Here's the thing about Turo, it's owned by regular everyday people. So the car is maybe it may be my car and I say, you know what, I'm not going to with a day. I'm gonna list my car for rent for the weekend. Now you sitting mm-hmm. home all weekend, you know you sitting home. <laughs> Put your car on Toro and make some money. The people going to come yeah. pick your car up. They're going to drive your car and they're going to bring it back. And you just made some money. All you did was sit home all weekend. Listen, That's crazy. the best time in history right now, the best time yeah. to be to be an entrepreneur, to be whatever you want to be. It's the best time right now because there are so many opportunities out there. I mean, they're everywhere. Like you wouldn't think I, I was <laughs> I was reading. I was watching a video. No lie. And people are making a thousand dollars a month selling books that have nothing in them but lines, just lines, just journals. J- journals are killing it right now. And b- yeah. but you'll be surprised. People buy things for for different reasons. Like they may buy. It's a journal. You can go to the dollar store. I got so many journals around this house. Me too, man. Hold on. Me oh too. I God, have tons of those things. Tons of journals. Cause you go to the dollar yeah. store and they're just there. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> as if I need another journal and another pen. I can't help myself because it's a dollar. But here's the thing. There are people selling their journals on Amazon for $7, mm-hmm. yeah. making thousands of dollars a month selling journals. And here's why. When you open up, it's just blank pages. But the cover may be something so beautiful. They be like, oh, that's mm-hmm. a beautiful. Because we buy for the cover. It's nothing inside the book but pages. That's like true. lines. That's it. I buy all lines for the cover. Just the cover. Because <laughs> it's a journal. You're going to write in it. Some of them have lines. Some of them, some of them don't. So it's just... It's just the, and I don't know how I got up on this tangent, but it is just the best time ever to just start something. Start your side hustle. Do something that you like. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, we all, JJ has a podcast. It's called In the Doll World, and she they, they're killing it. Her and her co host, Tammy, they are crushing the industry. You know why? Because they got a very cool podcast and a very cool niche. Best time ever. Be- yeah. Listen. And so, yeah. when the young lady asked me about podcasts, and she said, I see you very passionate about podcasts, and I said, I am, because it's such a great platform, and it's just allowed, I, listen, I can't wait to the day, I'm telling you, I can't wait, and I've been sitting out asking myself, G, when that day comes, when we can walk into that building, what's going to be on the wall? Is it going to be Noise Media Network, or is it going to be Good Morning Gwinnett? Because oh, the day is coming. Gosh. The day is coming. Oh, um, I don't know. But we all have podcasts, so that's that's the thought Noise right now. Network, like I think. that, right? So it's like, is it going to be Noise Media Network or is it going to be Good Morning Good Morning. But but we all got podcasts, so you know. So yes, when I think I, about I, that, it's like, man, like I love this space, oh, and it's going to be so amazing. And it's going to be so amazing. It's happening see, next year. Oh yeah, it's happening. It's going to happen next yeah. year. We're claiming <laughs> it. That commercial said it's, it's happening. happening. <laughs> That, yeah, yeah. If y'all have never seen that commercial, that commercial is hilarious. <laughs> and I'm gonna tell y'all, and then I'm gonna go to the song. And we're gonna come back and do some news for real. So there is a, there's some guys inside of a, they're in a board meeting. They're in a meeting inside of a, a conference room, <laughs> and no, and nobody speaks. The, the the two Chinese guys don't speak English, and I think it's a Russian right. guy or something. Yeah. He's speaking some really terrible Chinese, and so he says something. He thinks he's talking in Chinese or whatever Mandarin, yeah. and he said, "I need a hug." That's what he says, because he thought he was saying something else, but he really said, I need a hug. So the Chinese, the two guys look at each other, and then they give him a hug. And then the other guy says, it's happening, because they think the deal has been done. But he really asked, yeah, he really asked for a hug. It was, it was hilarious, y'all. You got, listen, you got to see it. If you haven't seen it, you got to see it. All right, listen, I'm going, JoJo, I'll be right back. I'm going to a song. I'm going to be back after the song, give you some real news about what's going on in and around Gwinnett County. So stay tuned for that. I know, I keep saying that, right? I know it's coming. Get away, feeling too good to me Chilling all day, all in your space Is where I wanna be Here in this room, what did you do? I just can't get enough Too caught up in your love I've been trying to forget But you won't let me Something in my brain wants you I've been hanging by myself Seems to work on you. 
Girl, Oji Bell Kearney giving you the daily rundown about what's going on in and around Gwinnett County. At least I'm about to start to. <laughs> I've been trying to get to this. Listen, y'all know it's Monday. I've been having short Monday because I haven't had a guest, but it's going to be long Mondays. So, you know, a few weeks ago they had a board meeting. So the, the Gwinnett board, the school board had a meeting. And, man, people got really rowdy in that meeting because they didn't want to wear masks. Wow. They didn't want to wear masks. So they were really, really rowdy in the meeting. And, um... They had a problem. They had to call security. Um, Penny Poole was the president of the NAACP. She was like, Mm -hmm. she was saying it was racist. It was crazy. Like somebody sent me the video and they was like, look at this. And I was intending to post the video, but I didn't get a chance to. But it went, it went straight left and people were like upset and they had, they called the police on some people and some people they didn't call the police on. So of course, you know, Penny was, I don't know if you ever been in the room with Penny, but um, (laughs) Penny is, uh, yeah, Penny don't play. She don't play. And so, you know, it was like one of them things where it was like um, she was saying that she got kicked out, but other people didn't get kicked out because she wasn't wearing a mask. And um, it was a mess. But now they're trying to, yeah, they're trying to figure out how to run these board meetings because people, it was so bad, you know, and it was crazy. I saw the video for about 15 minutes and I was like, ooh. So, and I, it was crazy because I was like, I should have been at that meeting. So, I need to start going to some of these board meetings and, and planning meetings. And But a lot of times, I don't know about it until, like, it's too late. So, I have to get better with that part, better with knowing about those type of things. So, I can come back and tell y'all my, I saw the video. That's why I'm able to talk about it. But it's, in the, you know, right now, they're trying to figure out exactly what to do. How are we going to run these school board meetings? So, Everton Blair... That's what he's working on right now because he feels like they should still wear their mask because mm-hmm. we're, we're still not out the you know we're still not out the out of the out of, out of the, the pandemic yet we're not you know right. there are a lot of people who've got vaccinated um but there's a lot of people who haven't there's a lot of oh. people who haven't and there mm-hmm. are some strains that are out there that are really bad and I can tell you that I have two family members right now um suffering from the from the vaccine and i mean not from the vaccine suffering from um the coronavirus yeah and my my Mm -hmm. cousin is in the hospital she was fighting for her life for one minute and um thank god she she, they just moved her out of icu she'd been there for about three weeks like they just literally moved her out of icu like last week 
And um, and she was relatively healthy. Like she didn't have high blood pressure. She's not overweight, you know. But mm-hmm. it got her. And they, you know, we don't know what strain it was. But she was afraid to take the vaccine, and so she didn't take the vaccine. So her sister took it. Her dad took it. But she wouldn't take it. So she wound up getting the the pan, the, the, the the coronavirus. Her daughter, who's pregnant, got the coronavirus. Now she's in the mm-hmm. hospital. She's six months pregnant. That's my little cousin, and the, and her daughter's boyfriend. And so they all have it. And so people are saying, I'm not going to get the vaccine. But do you understand that it's not going anywhere? It has not gone anywhere. It's still floating around. Now we got a bunch of different variants out there. And for some people, that could be deadly. And so I get it. So why would you want to go? See, my thing is this. We've been vaccinated. I feel a little bit more better. Um, a little yeah. better better going out to places a little bit more because we have been vaccinated and I've had it. So, um, and it was not mm-hmm. fun, y'all. It was not fun. It was very painful. I had this pain in my chest. I couldn't breathe. I, all I could do was lay down. I was scared to lay in one position because they tell you to get up and lay down. They want you to walk around. I lost mm-hmm. 15 pounds in like a week. It was the craziest. I couldn't smell uh-huh. nothing. I couldn't taste anything. It was crazy. My pajamas was falling off me. It was nuts. It was not fun, so my my poor husband and I we both had it was mm-hmm. it was a, it was it was I can't even explain to you like why this is so important. So people have a fit about wearing a mask. I hate the mask. I know. I, I know. I, no. I, I hate them. My nose run when I wear it doesn't run when I don't. But as soon as I put the mask on, I got a runny nose. I found them disgusting because now I got to throw them in the garbage because my nose is running. Because so I don't like yeah. them either. Right? Nobody likes them. I mean, nobody's walking around saying, "Oh my gosh, this is what I want to do the rest of my life." You know what I mean? Like nobody wants to wear them, but it's it's part of the the the, the process of getting better. You know, and they're even saying that because we have been wearing the mask, I mean, even the flu has not been as exasperated as it usually is you know that it's been really calmed down because wow. yeah because we're wearing masks i mean we're not you know spreading all those things that we spread amongst each other wow you know what i mean without them so yeah they were saying even the flu season has been really not like not, not like it's been before because wow. we're wearing masks i mean at the end of the day it's masks you know or maybe an oxygen tank you know what i'm saying yeah. like, you need to figure that out yeah. you know and 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 and, and the fact that you don't want to wear it, that's fine. But, you know, you don't come to places, it's how I feel. Right. You know, don't come to places where, where masks are required. Right. You know what I mean? Like, I don't have no problem if you don't want to wear the mask, but don't come and talk to me in my face or stay away from me. You know what I mean? To a certain degree. Like, I have that, I have that right, too. Just like you feel like you have a right, you don't want to wear a mask. And I feel like I have a right to say, well, don't come and talk to me without one. That's right. That's true. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's how I feel, too. I feel like if you don't want to wear a mask and you walk up to an establishment and there's a mask mandate on their door, then respect that and and just don't go in. But the the parents of these kids are saying, you know what, we don't want our kids to wear a mask. You know, we don't want to wear a mask. We don't want them to wear a mask. And so they're having real issues right now with the, Mm. the boys having real issues with parents and things like that. I don't know. I guess for me... Oh, I've lost too many people to the coronavirus. So, you know, and I know people yeah. right now still struggling from the coronavirus. So I, I you know, yeah, we, we I, lost. I, lost, crazy. I lost too many. But anyway, let's keep it moving. So there's a program called the Gwinnett Entrepreneurship Program. It's the New Star Entrepreneurship Incubator. Y'all know y'all, when I see the word entrepreneur, I get excited. So there is the New Star Entrepreneur Incubator. It's a six-week six week program to help people who have been incarcerated start their own business. I think that's amazing. Mm, that's I wish so I had, cool. I know. I wish I could volunteer for this, and I just may find out who I need to contact to do that. Um, it's run through, oh, the county library. So it's run through the county library. Oh, nice. Yes, the first cohort is starting next, probably this week, because this is the week of June 1st. It's going to start this week. However, they are accepting applications for the second cohort. The second cohort begins in uh, July. They're only accepting 15 people per cohort. So you want to get involved. Now, here's the thing, guys. I just, Judge, we were just talking, you know, there are so many businesses out there. I mean, mm-hmm. there's so many things you can do, right? Now, George and I both tell you, being an entrepreneur is not easy. It's, nope. it's not. You got to give up something. You have to. You have to give up time. You may have to give up family and friends. Ooh, don't forget money. Ooh, I want to scare you. But yeah, you're going to have to make something better. Let me tell y'all something. Before I started my entrepreneurship journey, I used to go get my hair done every week, sometimes twice if I was going to a party. 
Right. If I was going out to a party where I need to look really cute, twice a week, get my hair done. My nails got done. I shopped every single week. My brother used to be so scared because he gave me his American, he gave me an American Express card, and I used to shop like a like a mad person, right? When I decided that I wanted to be an entrepreneur, and my daughter was three years old. She's 29. She'll be 30 next next month. She was three years old when I said, you know what? I got to do something different. And I started looking at ways to make money on the side because I had two and three jobs at one time. Mm-hmm. People don't even know that. My, my mother said one time, you did? I was like, yes, I did. I worked at the, I worked at the hospital. I would leave the hospital and go to the eye doctor. And then on other mm-hmm. days when I wasn't at the eye doctor, I was working at Prudential part-time until I went to Prudential full-time. <laughs> I had three jobs, there, all for real. I was working like a Hebrew slave. <laughs> and so, but but I realized I didn't want to do that. And so when I started my entrepreneurial journey, when I started looking at entrepreneurship, my daughter was three. When I went, when I went deep, she was about seven. And when I went deep, everything else had to stop. I had to stop getting my nails done. You know, my hair, I started doing my own hair, which I still do to this day, right? I had to give up some, give up my partying because I was a party animal four days a week. I was partying. <laughs> like I was a party animal. I had to give up my party. And Lord have mercy, I had to give up shopping. Ooh, did I have to give up shopping? Right? <laughs> More than anything else, I love clothes. Love, love, love clothes. Mm-hmm. Right? And I had so many clothes. So let me tell you how, how I began to love clothes. Because I need to share the story so y'all understand. I've always been a big girl. Right? When my mom moved us to New Jersey, I was 12 years old. I was going into junior high school. I had two teachers. One name was Miss Plant. One name was Miss Pine. They were friends. They were both plus size women. Miss Pines was beautiful though. Miss Pines had beautiful long hair. She was about Georgette complexion. She was beautiful. And she said to me, she said, Listen, you a big girl. You gotta look beautiful all the time. I was in the seventh grade when she told me that. I had just got to Clinton Place Elementary School, Clinton Place Middle School in, in Newark. I had just got there. She said, You gotta look good all the time. I went home and told my mother what she said. My mother took me shopping. And when she took me shopping, I'm never going to forget it. When I came back to school that Monday, I had on some black jeans. And I had on a black and white shirt. It was black on one side and white on the other side. And when she saw me, yes, when she saw me, she's like, that's nice. And from that day forward, clothes became my biggest. Like, I love clothes. and But that was something she put in my head. And so when I got old enough to get my own job and make my own money, my clothes, mm-hmm. my money went to traveling, partying, partying, clothes. That's where my money went. And when I tell y'all I had a closet full of clothes with tags on them, I did. So when I lost all the weight, I had all these clothes. that I Like this dress I have on right now, if I stood up, y'all can see me. I love the dress because it's pretty. One of my favorite dresses. It's really big. But you can't see it because I'm sitting down. And I refuse to throw it away because I love yellow. <laughs> And I was like, I feel like I want to be sunshine today. I'm going to wear that dress. It's so cute, but it's too big. But I and I and I threw. I gave away a lot of clothes. So I was like, I'm not giving that dress away. And and I look like I got on a, a paper sack down here below. On top, it look beautiful. At least I got on a dress because some people don't have no bottoms. <laughs> uh, I do have bottoms. It's, it's, it's <laughs> but. I said all that to say this new program for ex offenders is a, probably a great program, <clears throat> but you have to will, you have to be willing to to make a couple of sacrifices, and you don't have to make really big ones, and you can start it as a side hustle. But what you got to do is say, you know what, I'm committed to this, and so I'm I'm excited. I'm going to reach out to whoever is running the program at the library and seeking a volunteer because I have a lot to share, and I've worked with this population before. Um, yeah, in my past life, I was a paralegal. Ooh, don't get me started about that because I will be here all day with all the things I've done in my life. Um, but there are some things that I'm just truly proud about, you know, and I'm truly proud about the dolls. I'm truly proud about all the books that I've written and the ones that I'm going to write in the future. I'm truly proud about this podcast and the ones that I'm going to launch in the future. I'm, 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 there's some things, that, but I got to tell you, those things come with sacrifices. Let me tell y'all, yesterday. I wanted to do, it was so fun. I probably made a video yesterday to send to somebody. I was like, you know what? It's Sunday. I'm not making anything. My husband and I just hung out yesterday. It was, it was amazing. Look, y'all see me leaning to the side. It was amazing. You know why? Because he worked like a Hebrew slave and so do I. And so 
I was like, I'm not doing anything. It's Sunday. I'll do the video tomorrow. It's just got to wait a day. It was Sunday. I would have worked seven days a week if I worked yesterday. Mm-hmm. Now, don't get me wrong. I love what I do. I couldn't see myself doing anything else. But I shared these things with you to let you know that there is hope for you. And if someone is willing to teach you how to become an entrepreneur for free, take advantage of that. If you know yeah. somebody who's been incarcerated and they feel, they're feeling like, okay, I have no options right now. Yeah, you got a lot of options. But you need to know what they are. Right? Mm-hmm. And this program is going to let you understand how to start a business how to grow the business and all of the amazing opportunities out there because there are a lot of them y'all when i tell y'all they're everywhere they are everywhere so many it's so many it's, it's overwhelming it's overwhelming so if you know somebody who's um who wants who's been incarcerated they're looking for a way to earn some income they have some free time on their hands so they can take this entrepreneurship program then it's only 15 spots and the class is going to fill up it's going to fill up so you want to be sure to, mm-hmm. to 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 get in there and get registered Here's the number to call. The number is 770-978-5154. Again, that number is 770-978-5154. If you go to the Gwinnett Public Library website, which is gwinnettpl.org, you will see the class there. It's called the New Start Entrepreneurship Incubator. I think that's an amazing program. So I'm going to yeah, I'm going to reach out to them and see how I can volunteer because I just feel like even if it's like one day a week or something or a couple of hours a week mm-hmm. or something because I just feel like I have some value to add to them and to and to help them understand. See, I, I grew up. Georgette and I grew up in highly populated areas, so we saw a lot of things growing up. You know, um, the streets made us strong. You know, we we had our block. We stayed on our block. We knew everybody on our block. But we didn't grow yeah. up in the suburbs. Well, I didn't. I don't know about Georgia. I didn't grow up in the suburbs. I grew up in, oh, no. <laughs> grew up in the hood. South Bronx. Yeah. Uh-uh, no, South Bronx. South, South Bronx. <laughs> yeah. I grew up in New York. She grew up in the Bronx. So, so every time yeah. I do that, I'm like, you know, the hand thing. But I feel like I have something to share and, and offer. And um, so if you think yeah. that you know someone who could benefit from the New Style Entrepreneurship Incubator, please give them this information. 770-978-5154. Again, that number is 770-978-5154. Now, let me just tell y'all this. And this is for ex-offenders. But if you're out there and you're not an ex-offender, there's a ton of information out there for you to learn how to start a business. Matter of fact, you can go to the butterflysquad.biz, the butterflysquad.biz, and that's my that's my company. And we're, we're talking startups there all day long. You don't have to be an ex-offender to start a business. You just have mm-hmm. to have a good idea. Georgette and I have been just doing this for yep. a long time. When I met Georgette, Georgette had a company. She had a, 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 a gift basket company called Treasure. What was it called? Creative Treasures? Oh, my God. Creative Treasures. Creative Treasures. Yeah. Creative right? Treasures. That's when we met. She was doing... They, so, which I don't know about Georgette. She's really um, creative. Like, she makes things look beautiful. That's not my gift. That's her gift. Okay, that okay. We won't talk about that. That's no, no, just gifts. You not, make not make things other things look beautiful. Other don't, things like don't. I can make a graphic look pretty without knowing how to be a graphic. Well, that's writer. great. Not everybody can do that. Yeah, that's true. That that's my gift. That's one of my gifts. Georgette make boxes and kits and and you know what's cards cool? cards and she make all that stuff look pretty. And so she had that she had that business when I met her. She and her partner Monica. And, you know, so we've been doing this a long time. So we have a lot to share. And um, I'm sure JJ has her own stories about being an entrepreneur. And I know tomorrow's talk business Tuesday, right? I'm talking business today. That's because I, I haven't had a chance to talk to you guys all weekend. I still have a lot to say. Anyway, that, that's, the, that's the spill about the cohort, the New Star Entrepreneurship Incubator. Listen, y'all, y'all can tell, just like I love podcasts and I love being an entrepreneur. I just do. You know, it's who I am, is what I do every day and twice yeah. on Sunday. And suck yesterday, I didn't do anything. I went, I went, I went, I went, <laughs> yes, to, on Sundays. Yeah. I went to the store to pick up some ribs so we can put them on the grill today. So I'm having ribs mm. and grilled sweet potatoes. That's all I wanted. That's, that's great. That's I'm, I want some ribs, so I'll be over. Okay. So good. Come on. And I'm not, I'm not drinking wine anymore, just so y'all know. What, so, what are you drinking? Cranberry juice. Oh, she was getting her, her daily dose of wine in early. All right, listen, guys, I'm gonna go to a song. <laughs> I'm gonna go to a song, and I'll be no. right. Listen, people get up drinking beer. I was trying to make a breakfast beer. I was like, who? so I was like, who gonna drink beer at breakfast? But there are people. Ugh. When I was thinking about doing that beer, and I was doing my research, and I said to the oh, guy, yeah. I want to make a breakfast beer. He said to me, Audrey, 
that that industry that that part of the industry is owned by one company, so you gonna have a fight on your hands. I was like, really? Like people really drink beer at breakfast? And it was a dark brown, thick beer. And I was like, Ugh. Yeah. so wine doesn't surprise me. Listen, what is a mimosa? Uh, orange juice and uh, champagne. champagne. <laughs> Listen, don't surprise me at all. We're going to have a mimosa next week. I know, that sounds nice, actually. It sounds nice. (laughs) Cran raspberry is nice. Cran raspberry. Listen, I got some things. We got some things that's going to pop off. And I'm going to share with y'all. And it's going to be an entrepreneurial weekend. And it's only going to be for a few people. And that's going to be, we're going to get an Airbnb. And it's only going to be for a few people. But Yeah, I'll share that that with you later. But this is for the person who says, you know what? I really, really want to. Just spend three days and launch this business. It ain't. It ain't no. You know, it's not for the faint of heart. It's a lot of work that goes into it, and you got to be willing to make an investment. So, matter of fact, I'll talk about it tomorrow. Talk Business Tuesday. I'm gonna go to a song. <laughs> I'm gonna go to a song. I'll be back after the song to give you more of what's going on in and around Gwinnett County. So, stay tuned. Welcome back, welcome back. It's your girl, Audrey Bell Kearney, giving you a daily rundown of what's going on in the around Gwinnett County, joined by my good friend, Georgette Teller. So, y'all know, so a few months ago, Tiffany Porter was elected to be the Gwinnett County Tax Commissioner. She was elected. Mm-hmm. She won that position. 
And when she got the position, she's like, I want to raise right out the gate. So her plan was to do something with the taxes to increase her salary. And Governor Kemp signed some kind of bills like, no way. But anyway, anyway, um, three Gwinnett County cities reportedly plan to pay the county tax commissioner to collect taxes and other fees for them, boosting her salary by more than $34,000. Now, this agreement mm-hmm. comes despite the passage of the state law meant to end the practice of tax commissioners in Gwinnett and Fulton counties charging city taxes um, to collect their taxes, then pocketing the money. So, Kemp said, well, no way it's not going to happen, but three counties, three cities in the county say, you know what? Yeah, it's going to happen. We're going to pay her. Um, there are some people make some big... Let me tell you, that's another wow. thing, Georgia. <laughs> some folks in this county <laughs> making some big money. <laughs> I remember when I moved here, my friends were like, you can't make no money down there. I was like, nah, that's not true. Like, you know, they thought we were in the country. Listen, mm-hmm. J. Alvin Wilbanks, who is the superintendent of schools here in Gwinnett County for the Gwinnett County School, uh, Public School System, the man makes $650,000 a year. Man. I was that's like, crazy. what? So they fired him, right? But he still had a contract. <laughs> they fired him. He still had a contract. So when he leave in July... He would take with him over five hundred thousand dollars as a school superintendent. They're, they're making money. I'm speechless. The okay. sheriff, I think the sheriff position, I think it pays about one hundred and forty thousand dollars. Um, Tiffany's position, I can't remember where her position paid, but she was like, "I need more money in there." So she came up with a way for her to make more money, which has been it has been done for quite some time now because she said she wanted to do it. It's a problem, and so. Mm-hmm. Um, Governor Kemp passed a bill saying it can't happen, but apparently um, they are, are saying, you know what, we're going to do her, give her what she wants. So um, the eternal email says that the city leaders intend to pay Gwinnett Tax Commissioner Terry Porter either one or two dollars per parcel to collect taxes on their city's behalf. So she's going to make the extra money she was trying to get. She was trying to get some extra money, she's going to get it. That would raise her salary. So. The Democratic elected, the elected um, in the fall makes one hundred and forty-one thousand right now. Wow, <laughs> that's what she makes right now. The then allow under the state law would have raised her salary if she had gotten what she wanted. They would have raised her salary by one hundred and ten thousand dollars. So she would have mm. been she would have been making two hundred and fifty-two thousand dollars a year. Wow. Let me tell y'all something. People, wow. you can't make no money down there. Yeah, you need to come live in Gwinnett County, DeKalb County, Fulton <laughs> County. It's money made in these counties. You can say what you want to say. I'm telling y'all, you know, Governor Kemp signed that bill on, on the 10th, signed the law on the 10th. Um, but but there's other things that was not in the bill. I'm sure they're going to try to go back and amend the bill to, to knock out yeah. everything because they don't want her to make that money. You know, she's like, listen, I'm working hard for this county. I need to make some money. <laughs> so she's trying to get she's trying to get to that two fifty two. I ain't mad at her. Listen, you gonna do the work. You got to be appreciated yeah. for it. So she right yeah. now she's on board to do about two hundred and fifty two thousand. Child, child, nice. child. Wow, nice. Juje, I got a quick question. When I play the music nice. now, can you hear the music when I play it? No, yeah. oh, nice. See that's a new setup. That's a new setup, y'all. So she cause before <laughs> I would play the music, she's like, I can't hear the music, but she can hear it now yeah. because I'm yeah. on a different platform, so oh, if, you ain't see me moving. Okay, so no, because you, know, you, you you switch the, to the screen, but usually I'm in your dancing now. Oh, I switch the screen. I can see you moving if I had the screen open, but I have three screens. I'm looking at at one time right now, which is crazy. So so instead of having two computers, I have one big screen with three screens sitting up here, really cool. So I'm looking at the three screens right now. So if you were dancing, I missed it. <laughs> Don't worry about it. it wasn't. We're gonna do a TikTok here one day. Wasn't anything to record. <laughs> We're gonna do a TikTok. It's so crazy, y'all. I got so I have I have um live captioning also enabled. So when Georgette talks, the live captioning pops up on this side, and when I talk, the live captioning pops up on the other side. It's I'm loving this technology thing. I'm loving this whole show layout. So I'm excited about all the things that you know we're gonna be doing. Yeah, I got live captioning going on right now. It's crazy. All right, so listen, um, everybody is developing here in Gwinnett County. There's there's development all over the place. And Sugar Hill said, even though even after the East Center, if you have not seen the East Center, it's very nice. It's over in Sugar Hill. I got a chance. I, as a matter of fact, I think there's a picture a picture of the East Center on um is on my Instagram account. But um, everybody's building here. We're building up, and you know, some people are not happy, Georgia, because they feel like it's been. When it is becoming mm. overpopulated like Atlanta, 
And they, they're probably right because mm-hmm. they're building everywhere. Like townhouses, condos, everything. Just oh everything. They're just packing it in together. And I was like, yeah, they probably are right. Um, but Sugar Hill is, is a part of Gwinnett County too. So Sugar Hills, West Broad Street has seen a transformation in the last five years. I went down to Sugar Hill. It's really nice over there. Um, it's gone from it's going from mostly a quiet street dominated predominantly by City Hall and a cemetery to a busy throughway filled with restaurants, theaters, office spaces, a gym, apartments, wow. art gallery, a history center, and a veterans wow. monument. It's a lot, and they're still building. Wow, that's how Snellville's gonna be. Yes, the whole downtown Snellville thing because it just used to be this little tiny little area, you know, yeah. City Hall and a couple of little blocks, but. Man, they got a whole bunch of stuff happening over here. The, the Grove. They're putting the Grove in Snellville. Yes. So the Grove is coming to Snellville. And so, and that's going to have a mercantile store inside and places for merchants. It's going to be crazy. It's, it's going to be crazy. And, and part of me loves the growth because I feel like it just makes it richer. The other part of me is like, ooh, but it kind of takes away the land that I love. Because I love the land. Yes. Right? Yeah. And so I'm kind of caught, yeah. kind of like caught in the middle. So what I was like, I got to get my own land so I can just have my land. So when I want to <laughs> fill the land, I just go to the land. You know, when I want to go out and be in general population with everybody, I do. But, um, yeah, so downtown Sugar Hill, they're getting some new additions. You know, they talked a lot about parks and recreations and green spaces. And so they're growing. Like Sugar Hill, when I went to Sugar Hill when I first moved here, it was very quiet and a little country. Same thing with the Cula. Like, I went to the Cuba, mm-hmm. same thing, it was very quiet, you know, it's oh, still yeah, quiet. Oh, yeah, it's not like that. But now it's just, it's growing, and, you know, it's it's moving, like, it, it, it's just moving. So, you know, Sugar Hill is about to get some more things going on there. Um, some of the residents, I'm sure, are not happy, you know. They, they, <laughs> they like, it's, they don't want to, they don't want their space to be invaded. But here's the thing, you got to mm-hmm. go move to Toonsbury somewhere. You probably can't even move to Toonsbury because they just bought it. 500 acres over there and they about to build it up so don't even go to Toonsbury you gotta go to the deep go up in the mountains ain't nothing happening up there which is crazy it's like going to another world when you go to the mountains go past Helen go past Helen yeah you wanna be alone oh Jesus probably nothing up there there's nothing up there Georgette they got a Walmart like when I go to casinos it's like I'm in another world like when I go to Cherokee it's Mm -hmm. like driving into another world it's like it's just it's in the middle of the of the mountains so yeah. if you really want to be away That's from good. stuff, go to the mountains. Ain't nobody coming up there too much stuff for the gamble. And when somebody <laughs> when, when when we get a Democrat in the, the the seat here in Georgia, we ain't got to go to North Carolina or Alabama to gamble. We be gambling right here. Yeah, right that's here. true. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. Um, Sugar Hill is um, they're going to be doing so the next few years. We'll see a continued development in Sugar Hill, but not all of it will be in the downtown area, which has been a boost in the last couple of years with the openings of the East Center and Broadstone and mixed developments adjacent City Hall. So the upcoming activities include opening a sprawling new residential mixed residential use project. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Right. Right along State Route Twenty. Um, as well as a new senior living uh, community, two new parks, and walking trails. Wow. They got a grocery store chain that has been growing its footprint in Gwinnett County. I think they probably talking about Little because Little has just been opening up everywhere. And so they got a lot of stuff coming up. So I'm sure some of the residents of Sugar Hill just ain't that excited. But listen, they got two, <laughs> two new residential developments expected to open by the end of 2022. That's just next year, y'all. They got two. Wow. So... You know, one of them is gonna have about two hundred ninety four units. That's that's a lot of that's a lot wow. of folks. Yeah. It's a lot of folks. That's lot just of, one, right? It's one. That's one of them. Wow. One of them. Okay. One of them. So, you know, I'm sure Sugar Hill is not excited about Georgette. We forgot yes, to get the word you. of the week. Talking, I, even I realize, know that's that, okay. So. You I, instead of me doing the, the word of the day, you can do the word of the week when we close it out. So I'm I'm sitting here talking. I'm so happy to have you back, and then I ain't let you do the word of the week. <laughs> People, that's okay. I just thought you were just happy to have me back. I, mean, I, am, I am, I am, I am, I am, I am. So all right, so go ahead. We're gonna let you do the word of the week because we it's eleven oh nine. I'm just running my mouth, and I'm just I just feel good today. You know. I have them days. We're going to have yellow on the kind of bright today. You know, we didn't, co- we didn't, we didn't coordinate this, y'all. This was a star. No. You know, it was a star. Because I had purple to originally put on. And I was like, you know, I think I'm going to put the yellow dress on. Because I feel like it's nice and bright and sunshiny. And that's why I put the yellow dress on. So, you're right. And I didn't plan this. It wasn't planned. 
It was the stars. Mm. All right, so listen. Let me stop, shut my mouth. Go ahead, JJ. Give me the word of the, the word of the week. I done messed up. I done <laughs> talked so much and talk you right out of the word of the week. <laughs> Using your words. That's what you do, man. That's what you do. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I still have to shuffle my cards, just so y'all know. I, I, I have two sets, right? So I use these, and I also use these. I'll do, I'm going to use this deck today. Okay. Yeah, so those card. cards are Georgette's cards. Those are her <laughs> cards. She created those cards. So um, with These cards. are the originals, I am you are cards. Yes. All right. This was the one that is coming with my, whenever I get that going, right <laughs> My positive word share card deck, which is this one. So I, I alternate because we are, I am on fifty something words already, and a card deck only holds fifty two words. So I need to. We need fifty two new words. So I need. <laughs> no pressure. No pressure. No pressure. All right. So all right, the word of the week today is oh, this is a nice book. They're all nice words to me, right? Is mm-hmm. can you see it? Phenomenal. Phenomenal. Yes, that's a good word. Yes. Now you can see the word, y'all. I'm so excited. <laughs> like, this is the first time you see the word. That's the word of the week. Go ahead, Jojo. the word. So, I'm going to say that for myself, I am phenomenal. Yes, right? you are. I am phenomenal. And you, you are listening, who I was watching for the first time. I'm so excited, right? So, I get to do a little bit of my, my I am you are process here. So, I am phenomenal. And guess what? You... You out there, you are phenomenal. And phenomenal is really about being remarkable and extraordinary. And um, and we are remarkable and extraordinary. And I think a lot of times we feel that we have to be doing something to be that person. But we, we don't have to do anything because it is a part of who we are. I mean, when, you, when a baby is born and you look at that baby, what is that baby? Beautiful, phenomenal, creative. You know, even if it's a little baby. It has all of these amazing qualities, and that's you. We were babies once, right? You know, people thought that same way about us because we are. That is part of who we are as a being in this world. So you are phenomenal. You may do amazing and other amazing things, but at the end of the day, you are still that way. And I think a lot of times those things don't come out for people because they're never in the space that allows for those things to come out. You know, a lot of us have different tragedies, different lifestyles, different ways we're brought up. And some of those things are suppressed in us or we are not in that space that will honor us being phenomenal or honor us being creative or honor us being or even feeling worthy about who we are. But we are just being here makes us phenomenal. You are phenomenal. And that is the word of the week. And I want you to own that. I want you to know that. And the thing about doing these words is that we always feel uncomfortable, I think, sometimes saying those things about who we are. Because we don't believe that that is who we are. But I'm literally here to tell you today, (laughs) you are all those things. I know one of the times when I've done my sessions with people, and they have these amazing words, one of the things that somebody had said to me was that I didn't think I could be all those things. Mm. But but we are all Mm -hmm. those things. Mm -hmm. We are creative, we are happy, we are funny. You know what I mean? Yeah, so we do have, we do, it's not that we're not, we're not sad, you know, that we don't get angry. I'm not talking about that. We, we have all those things that encompass who we are. But at the end of the day, we use sad, we use I'm depressed, we use I'm not happy much more mm-hmm. than we use I'm happy. Mm-hmm. You know, I am beautiful today. I am phenomenal today. And me sharing these words is to get you to use those things on a more regular basis so that you can see how amazing and phenomenal you truly are. So that is the word for the week. Phenomenal. You are phenomenal. Phenomenal. You know, it's so crazy. It's so crazy that you that was the word that came up today because yesterday, Franklin and I were in the, in the store. We were in the car. We were driving. And I have a friend in New Jersey. Her name is Andrea. Andre is a photographer and her husband, her ex-husband was an artist, right? But he had Mm. his demons. And so he was an artist and he had demons that he was balanced. So they got a divorce, but they had five kids, right? Mm. This is what she named her kids. She had three boys and two girls. Her oldest son is named Marvelous. Oh, nice. Her middle son is named Dominant. Her baby son is named Invincible. What? Her grandson is named Phenomenal. 
Wow. And when she told me that, and it was crazy because we were driving yesterday and I was talking about Phenomenal. And I said, I wonder, so his, you know, we call him Phenom. I said, man, I wonder what Phenom is doing now because he got to be a big boy. And I, I really, I'm going to call her and say, how's Phenom? He was the cutest little boy, but he's got to be a big boy now because she's been my friend for a very long time. So he's got to be about 14 wow. years old. But when she told me that, I was like, wow, such a nice name. So Invincible, Marvelous, Dominant, wow. Invincible, and Phenomenal. Now, let me tell you something. All three of her sons are artists. Everyone, all th- I'm talking about. I'm not talking about just artists. Then those boys are like dominant is a Van Gogh. Wow. Marvelous is more on the comic book side. I'm talking about. I'm mm-hmm. talking about work that they should be making millions of dollars, but they're shy. Mm. All three of them. Vinci. Wow. Vinci was a little bit. He wasn't as shy as dominant and marvelous. Because Vinci was like, I'm going to do my own thing. But Vinci was an abstract artist. Like, he was the one I could see being an architect. Because they, and they drew, and but they all did just something different. Vinci was mm-hmm. an architect. Like, I, I could see him being an architect because he was like the ones that did all the straight lines and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, very structural. Very structural. Marvelous. Was, and I, I'm never going to forget them, y'all. Because they, I just found them to be amazing. Marvelous was more of like an animator. Like mm-hmm. he he did more like the drawings. I can see him working for movies or Disney or something Comic like that. Book or something like that. Mm-hmm. Dom Dom was an artist of Van Gogh. He did a picture. I swear, I thought somebody took it with a camera. He did plenty. Mm, wow. His artwork is so beautiful. I'm talking about he. Wow. I'm talking about. I was like, did he paint that? He painted a picture, <laughs> Georgette, that was so beautiful. I thought he took it with a camera. And so wow. she named her kids these things out the womb. She named them, yes. and that's who they became. Her daughter's yeah. her daughter name is Keasia. One name is Keasia, and one name is Alasia. And um, uh, they 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 act and they sing and they dance. But she's creative wow. like that. She takes the most amazing pictures, and she just loves it. Like she's been doing it for so long, and I think now she has really finally finally turned it into a revenue stream for herself. But for years, oh, yeah. it was just that's because good. she loved it. Like she took a camera yeah. everywhere she went. You know, it was about her kids. It wasn't about dating. Mm-hmm. When I t- and she was like, she's an amazing person, and she you have to know her to know her, right? Because she's not gonna let right. you in. She's like this. She's very guarded. But when she lets mm-hmm. you in, she lets you in. She loves to laugh. And I, right now, as I sit here and talk about her, I gotta call her because I haven't <laughs> talked to her in a long time. But we talked about. I was I was telling my husband yesterday. I wonder what Phenom is doing. You know, yeah. because his uncles they're amazing. His yeah. mom is amazing and beautiful. Just beautiful kids. Like, all of them are just beautiful yeah. kids. I was like, those kids are so cool. beautiful, talented, talented mannerable. Yeah. Like, just good, just good kids, right? Yeah, and so, so that's so nice, man. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, what you, that's what you want. You know, you just want your kids to, great, you know, to grow up and be really good people, you yeah. know, at the yeah. end of the day, you know? So that's really cool. And the fact that they're very artistic. So, oh, well, you know, the, 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 the word just meant you need to... You need to connect. You know yes. that's really what it. Had so to. that word was for you today. <laughs> it, it, it was for me, and I was, and because I'm telling, I just we just talked about it, and he was. I think the last time I saw him, he was about eight years old. So mm-hmm. I've been in Georgia eight years this year. Next one to be eight years. So he's got to be about sixteen. He might be older okay. than that at this point because. Mm-hmm. He was kind of big when I saw him. So, I'm going to say he was about eight, but he may be older. But I'm definitely going to reach out to her today and say, girl, I was talking about you yesterday. And then the word phenomenal come up. And I was thinking about phenomenal <laughs> yesterday saying, wonder what he's doing. You know, wonder how yeah. he is. Because he was such a cute, he's such a cute little boy. I said to myself, little girls, we love him. Ooh, little girls, we love him. Because he was just, he just, he had these long old eyelashes. I mean, like, really long uh-huh. eyelashes and thick eyebrows and got nice braided hair and He's just a gorgeous little boy, and I was like, "Them little oh. girls gonna love Phenomenal." And he got a name like Phenomenal. I got a name. I was gonna say that name's gonna strike up a whole bunch of conversations. Yeah, like, what's your name? My name is Phenomenal. Cool. I'm like, all right phenomenal. now, Phenomenal. Also, too, check out the uh, if you guys have it. I'm sure most of you have heard the Phenomenal Woman, you mm-hmm. know, a poem by Maya Angelou. But if you have it, uh, check it out. And if you have, hey, go back and read it again. You know, it'll, it'll, it'll make you feel much more, um, I think, remarkable, you know. That's after, right. After you read that poetry. Remarkable. So. Phenomenal and remarkable. <laughs> All right. Now. All right. I, I love words. I know you do. I know you do. So listen, guys, we ain't going to hold y'all. That's all I got for today. I'm going to go to my last song and I'm going to come back and I'm going to close it out. So stay tuned for that. 
Um, Georgia gave y'all the word phenomenal. Yes, you are. You are phenomenal. Mm -hmm. What's a good song for that? Yeah, I'm tongue tied, twisted around your finger like a piece of string. I'm winded, chasing after your ghost is real exhausting. I'm in love, but I don't think it's what I thought it was. Supposed to be love story, no guts and no glory. How did I get so dizzy? Thinking of you, I don't usually get like this It's something about you, I miss Could it be we never had that kiss? Well, I don't usually get like this Get like this Can't stop falling These wings are gonna flap for me But I keep waiting Day. Um, thank you so much for spending an hour and 23 minutes with Georgia and I. Um, I appreciate you and love you for that. Be sure to follow me on Facebook at Good Morning Gwinnett. Follow me on Instagram at Good Morning Gwinnett. And follow me on the Twitter at Good Morning Gwinnett. Also, listen, I got a YouTube channel. I got so many. Listen, y'all can follow me all over the world. I got so many platforms. I forget half of them. I forget half. I got so much going on. I forget half of them. Like, I got a channel on YouTube. Yeah, I got a Good Morning Gwinnett channel. All 500 of them episodes are on YouTube, streaming on Amazon. I'm all over the place. Like, so you can get me wherever you listen to podcasts. Apple Podcasts, <laughs> Google Podcasts, Spotify, SoundCloud. I'm there. I'm there. And it's so crazy, G. Because, you know, you have to pay for SoundCloud. Like, SoundCloud, they give you, like, <laughs> like an hour free. They, they don't give you nothing. They're not a lot. So if you don't pay for it, you'd be sitting there every day taking one episode out. Putting, I was like, I'm not doing that. <laughs> I'll pay SoundCloud their $12 so they can syndicate my show. 
Um, I was, I was just sitting when the song was playing. I was just sitting here thinking. I was like, man, you know, I spent a lot of money on this show. Like I spent a lot of money. <laughs> Cause you don't think about that stuff all the time. So you start looking at it like, man, I really. I know, girl. I do. I spent a lot of money in the doll world. You crazy? Yeah, a lot. Of, you don't. Oh, you don't even think you about it like, until you start. Do I need this, right? Maybe I don't. Oh my god! And, I, and like I, I found out <laughs> yesterday that I'm addicted to buying domain names. Ooh, <laughs> I could have told you that oh, like twenty years ago. <laughs> I felt I said I said okay this is an addiction for me because I will have an idea like I had yesterday that I can't start because when it went to retrograde and I bought five domain names I said oh my god I'm addicted to buying domain names that is a problem I have a problem you guys I'm addicted to buying domain names um I have 141 domain names yeah I don't have that many that's gonna happen. I'm gonna have to go to. I'm gonna have to go to rehab. Domain rehab. Domain yes. rehab. Go, Daddy. Need to start a go. Go get it. They're not gonna start a rehab. But they be like, listen, you want to up and get the no. plan? You want to become a member of the club? Like, listen, I'm a member of the club because I had. They like, listen, Miss Bell. You know, you have so many. Do- you might want to think about joining the club. You're gonna save a lot of money. They right. I said because otherwise, I be spending up some money. But you're the domain club. I am. I am, Georgette. That's how bad it is. My go daddy called me he's like Miss Bell. You need to be in the domain club. I said, "How much is it?" They said, "One hundred twenty-one dollars." I said, "Put me in. Put me in the club." Oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Okay. Because I, I, you know, I'll get these ideas. Does that allow you to buy a certain amount of domains? For you can buy, you can buy, discount? yeah, at a discount at a discount. So every time I buy a domain name, it's at a discount. So. Like I bought five okay. yesterday, and out of that five, I think three of them was like two of them was like one was like ninety nine cent, one was like okay. one ninety nine, two ninety nine. So what happens is if I have an idea for them, right? I buy the domain names, and if I roll the idea, I I, I hold it for a year. If I don't roll it out within a year, I let it right. go. Like even though I bought five yesterday, I think I had about ten that expired that I'm never going to use. Yeah, 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 yeah. I have some too. I, I definitely don't have that many, but I do have. I have. I have enough. Yeah. <laughs> My daughter and I were at um we were getting our teeth whitened um at the beginning of the year like it was right after it was like February I think well was it February was it the end of the year anyway we went to go get our teeth whitened and she had told me about this um this idea she had we like lined up there like eh, with the stuff on her teeth and she was like I had an idea so she can't tell me that nobody can tell me they got an idea especially in my house like you got an idea like even my husband he said I got this idea right. And I was, and he said it, and I was like, "Oh, we got to buy the domain name for that." And I went and bought the domain name because it was such a great idea. Now, will he roll it out? Probably never. However, it's such a cool name. I may roll it out, and it's a podcast, so it, I'll probably I may roll it. I may be on the Noise Media Network. But my daughter and I was getting our teeth whitened, and she had this idea, right? And the, and the idea was pertaining to where we were and some other stuff. And we, we she right. called it out. She called out the name. And the girl, was, it was a young girl. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, she's going to steal that name. So I'm letting it go like, yeah. <laughs> like a thing on my on GoDaddy, like, yeah. <laughs> Buying the domain name. Because that's how I am. Remember when we went to... When we went to when I, I know. I know how you are. <laughs> we, JoJo and I was at PodFest, right? We went to pot <laughs> and we were walking around like we the pot chicks, and we kept saying that, right? And people kept saying, "Oh, that's so nice," and I was like, "Too many people uh, that yeah, said that's that. nice, right?" So I'm sitting in the chair, we're in the, we're in the lobby, and there's a whole bunch of people talking, and somebody said, "What you doing?" I said, "Buying the pot chicks domain name." I'm at the, I'm at pot <clears throat> fest, sitting in the lobby like this. <laughs> so yeah, I have an addiction. But when I hear something nice, I have to like, I was like, because I understand. Now, what I realized, and I'm going to have to check GoDaddy on this, there are some names that are really hot, and I put it in for the dot com, and it says taken already. Now, some of that stuff I'd be mm-hmm. made up, and I'd be like, I think, and it's, so if you want it, though, it's $119, but it's taken already. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm beginning to think that yeah. GoDaddy can read my mind. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, be, I'm, I'm beginning probably, to think that they probably follow you on yeah. domain names. Right? They probably got my house tapped. We're gonna follow her. Like we're gonna. What is she thinking right now? She, <laughs> she about to get us. Oh like, yeah, that's so funny. It's hilarious. But anyway, <laughs> thank you guys for listening. No, but, know, but the trick of that, but the trick of that too. Before we close out, the mm-hmm. trick of that is, and I know what you mentioned that before, is if you're thinking your name you're on the domain site and you put it in, you better buy it. Yes. Because if you don't, then 
you can't say I'm gonna go back in 10 minutes, 20 minutes nope. to buy it because somebody is searching out there and they will see it pop up somewhere. And I honestly believe that they have uh, like the web crawls and that's what they do. So when, web, you go, yes. when you go to go when you go to Google and you search on something, I never do that. Like when I learned that because I have so many and I learned and it happened to me. Like I went to Google, I searched for a word, right? And I went to go that it was available. And I said, like, oh, I'll get it tomorrow. I went back the very next day. It was gone. I was like, how is that possible? Yep. Because I searched for it in Google. I'm sure there's some kind of spider that's crawling Google to see what people are searching for. And we know that because they're always doing SEO. So they got to know what you're searching for. Yep. And it searches for what you're looking for. And then when you go to buy it, if you don't buy it right away, somebody's going to buy it. And they're going to squat on it. They're called squatters, like domain squatters. And mm-hmm. I'm not a squatter. I just... Like a lot of my stuff, I just some of the things I have, like Young Entrepreneur Academy, I've been had forever. Like I'm never gonna let that go. Sister Inc. I've been had forever. I'm never Mm -hmm. gonna let that go. I never, I don't use it. I don't, I don't even use Young Entrepreneur Academy, but I'm never gonna let them go. So I just hold them because they're mine. Like I start, I bought them when when they. I've been had Young Entrepreneur Academy probably since forever. God, since 2003 or something. Yeah. Sister Ink too. Sister Ink, yeah, Sister came way before that, so I'm never gonna. Yeah. I, I started. Let's see, Young Entrepreneur Academy was like 2003. Sister Ink probably was around 2002. 2000, 2001. I was gonna say about one. Yeah. yeah I'm never gonna let that go. So I'll just hold them forever. You know. Um. Yeah, I waste money holding them because I could let them go, but no, I'm not gonna let. Even I even put I even put a couple of them up for sale. Nobody wanted to buy them. Here's the thing: nobody cares anymore because. If you don't get dot com, you get dot co. If you don't get dot co, get dot me. If you don't get dot me, get <laughs> dot, dot, biz, dot biz. I was looking for one yesterday and it had dot cash. I was like, dot cash. Oh. You can do a dot cash. I was looking at my Wise Woman yeah. Invest podcast stuff and I'm looking yeah. at I was looking for something and it was like, Oh, that's not available. But dot cash is available. I'm like, dot cash. They got a dot cash. They got a dot fund. So you like you oh. don't even need a dot com mm-hmm. anymore. Like it's dot everything. Like they was like, I, yeah. I'm waiting for them to put dot podcast. I'm surprised they haven't yet. Like, yeah, I haven't too. Put dot podcast. That. It's coming. I bet you mm-hmm. they got dot radio. You want dot radio? You can get it, but it's 169 dollars. Mm-hmm. I was like, I like dot radio, but I'm not ready to pay 169. Not yet, because by the time mm-hmm. I renew, it's probably gonna be 269. Because, you know, go down to give you that upfront <laughs> discount. If you ain't in the club, you don't even get that. So, all right, listen, I got to go. I got to go eat. I've been eating cherries. I ate mm-hmm. nectar. I've been eating be- very healthy this morning. Uh-huh. Y'all know me. Y'all know I'm uh-huh. eating. Uh-huh. Juice. I, yeah, juice. That's, that's fruits in, in a liquid form. I normally don't eat breakfast before the show, but I was hungry this morning. So I was like, and I had just bought cherries yesterday and nectarines and peaches and oranges and bananas. And I was like, I'm about to get me a bowl of cherries and a nectarine. And I'm going to go down here while I set the show up and I'm going to eat that. And that's what I did. So I ate some cherries and nectarines, but now I need some real food. So I got Oyster Rockefeller upstairs and I'm about to go eat. Mm-hmm. You, don't mm-hmm. eat mm-hmm. you don't like that? You want some? You know, I don't like oysters. No. She don't like oysters. I got oyster Rockefeller upstairs, child, and I'm about to go up there, and that's what I'm about to have for my brunch because it's 1133. Love you guys. I'll be back again tomorrow at 10 a.m. Listen, be sure to follow me. Facebook, Good Morning Gwinnett. Twitter, GM Gwinnett. Instagram, Good Morning Gwinnett. And if you listen to the show on Apple, find your favorite two episodes, give it five stars. And also be sure to go to the website if you miss any past episode of the show. And you can do that by going to goodmorninggwinnett.com. And also support the show. Buy a t-shirt over there. Wear the shirt. You know, but listen, there's some cute shirts over there. My summer line is the bomb. Check it out. Check it out. And I got a Wise Woman Invest t-shirt over there, too. That's pretty cool, too. I like that shirt. I got, I like that shirt. Anyway, oh, and so June 12th, I'll be doing, oh, God, I'm going to be vending in the park. I'll bring you more information. I forgot where it's going. But it's going to be June 12th. And I got some really cute shirts, JJ. You got to see them. So wise women invest. So I'll be vending. Okay, um, cool. So listen, guys, y'all take care. Keep your mask on out there. Stay safe. Tell your family and friends you love them. I'll be back again tomorrow at 10 a.m. God willing to bring you more of the horoscopes and also more of the Good Morning Gwinnett show. Until next time, stay safe. Love you for life. Until next time, make it a great day. Bye now. You've been listening to Good Morning Gwinnett. Make sure to tune in Monday through Thursday at 10 a.m. Eastern Time to find out what's happening around Gwinnett. If you like this episode, subscribe now and share with your friends. To learn more about Noise Media Network, visit noisemedia.us.